Brown at Lake Charles with the Sulphur High School, freshman, lefty on the mound, lefty batter, left left, does both. How has been, how has your transition? Taking ground balls at second. Yeah, t- yeah taking Maybe. ground balls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boy, first lefty, second Allegedly. baseman, huh? Maybe. Good. Maybe one hey, trendsetter, day. baby. Uh, how has your transition been to Baton Rouge, to LSU? Obviously, LSU is a place that you've always wanted to come to. You turned down, I think you got drafted in the 16th round? Yes, sir. By the Rangers, please don't. Oh, he got served. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> he got Makes you feel so old, don't do right, it. Right, right, I, I still feel like I'm your age. I'm not, obviously. <laughs> um, you come here, you turn them down. What made you want to come here? One and two. What made you say, okay, I think college is my route, not going professionally. Well, first of all, thank you guys for having me. Like, it's awesome to be here. Yeah. Um, to answer your question, LSU has always been a dream of mine. Growing up, like watching the big LSU teams, the Alex Bregman teams, the Kramer Robertsons. Go back uh, a couple years. Go back a couple years. We're too old. We're too old. You deserve, you deserve every bit of this, sir. I'm still yeah. young, no, uh, <laughs> So, and then watching this past year, obviously the team that made it to Omaha, and I think it was 13 people drafted. And it's like, if I want to be a big leaguer, this is where I need to go. And it's the guys that are around me, the coaching staff, the teammates. And I feel like this is the spot where if I want to get to my ultimate best, I should be here. I love that. And I think, that's, I think, I think you nailed that on the head, right? I think college baseball now – is it's a pathway so much more advanced, especially yeah. in the SEC. Yeah. I mean, when we were playing, it was it was high level, high level. I mean, yeah. 2011, there were still a lot of guys that from SEC are still playing now. But I think even more so now, it is a well, if you're double A type caliber of talent. If you're doing it right, it's only getting better. Right? Yep, that's that's how it's supposed to go. Yep. What's been the you new being here? What's been the 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 toughest thing for you to trans translate once since from getting in high school, even about just the lifestyle and or on or off the field? Like, what's been the toughest thing for you? What's been so new to you? Probably scheduling. Like, being yeah. able to follow a certain schedule every day. Like, in high school, it's almost laid out for you. And here you're in charge of your own stuff. You know, you got to wake up, get your business done. Yeah, if you don't go to class, class it doesn't matter. It kind of matters. Yeah. Uh, and then being at the field for an extended amount of time, I don't think anybody works as hard as we do right now. And I think there's a reason we're so successful. But that's definitely something that – Take some adjusting to. Yeah. But, uh, it's not um, on the mound, right? So in, in high school, being a pitcher mm-hmm. and being a hitter, um, a lot of people are able to do that in high school. Right. Then you make that transition to college, mm-hmm. especially at LSU, where you're playing at a, at a very high level against top tier competition. Right. That number significantly mm-hmm. decreases, right? Jay has always been uh, open. Two guys doing both. You see Jack Caglione out there in Florida doing both. You see, obviously, Shohei Otani doing it mm-hmm. in the big leagues. And it's starting to become this, this trend. How has that uh, transition been for you coming here as a freshman saying, okay, I'm going to have to get my, my swings and I have mm-hmm. to develop as a hitter? Because to me, as a hitter, that's the hardest thing is coming as a freshman and adjusting to – Right. You know, the pitching at your face because the staff you have is, is ridiculous, right? right? It's like yeah. you have to – and it's all lefties, mm-hmm. I feel like. So, like, you have to make that big adjustment. But at the same time, you also got to keep your arm in shape and keep your body in shape to be able to go in there and be able to pitch effectively. How has that transition been for you and how have you managed that? It's definitely tough. It's definitely a big step up from high school, especially some of the guys that will play. But – all of our coaching staff, you know, Chief, Coach Johnson, Coach Jordan, all those guys really taking me and preparing me for the next level. Like, it's not so much of a swing adjustment as it is a mental adjustment, that in part. And it's just making sure to get all your reps in. Uh, it's not bad on the body because we have the best, I think, the best strength coach in the country and Coach Mack. And then just getting in the training room, doing some recovery. And like I said earlier, it's all scheduling. Like, yeah. if I can get in in the morning, get some throws in, get some mound work in or whatever, and then that afternoon be able to focus on the hitting part. Yeah, uh, It's not bad at all. And those guys, really, like I said, the coaches take all the credit. Like Love They're the that. ones that help me get it done. Now, we got a chance to meet you and your family in Omaha for the mm-hmm. first time. Um, we weren't exactly in the, 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 the greatest of places to be at the time, if you know. Oh, we're a great place, actually. I mean, we're in a great place. We're in a great place. We're in a great place for meeting people for the first time. Yeah. But right. anyway – I can only imagine, like, I never, growing up, I didn't go to Omaha. I Mm -hmm. never experienced Omaha. I never saw Omaha, like, as a kid going into college. Being able to be there for what was a very special time for LSU, and obviously you were on the docket to be able to come here right Mm -hmm. after it. 
being able to experience that as a kid with your family there, what was that like for you and, and, and you and your family? And like, how did that help you to transition to this and understand like, hey, this is the place for me? Right. Well, first of all, there's nothing like Omaha. It's Alex Box 2.0 when you're up there. I mean, there's 25,000 fans at every people game. People don't think that that's real. It's like it's yeah, a no, real thing. Really like people think we just blowing smoke up. And like it's yeah. not. It's real. No, there's 25,000 fans at the game, and 20,000 of them are LSU yeah. fans. So being there with my family, we decided, hey, we're gonna pack up. We're gonna go to Omaha to hopefully experience it as a fan before they get super stressed. That's the out. first time you've ever been. That was the first time I've ever oh, been. Oh, that's nice. beautiful. So. uh it's the first time that or the only time that they get to experience it without being obviously super stressed out like they get to actually enjoy it and for me it's my take at this is what I'm getting into and then being in the stands watching these guys get after it's like I couldn't want anything else it's so funny you bring that up because we like watching it watching them at home is a little different right and that was the first time we were sitting kind of near the family and like to see them watch their kids on that stage for the first time and you could see yeah the, the how invested and how bought in mm-hmm. and it, it almost looked different than it did at home because you realize like no like this is the stage so it's kind of cool that your family got a chance to do that well it's crazy because like you hear that a lot right like i went to Omaha when i was eight right to watch it as a mm-hmm. fan now you were coming to lsu the next year right, right. but when in 09 my freshman year we won it mason katz and jordan rittner we're at in Omaha as seniors in high school, knowing that they're coming to LSU the mm-hmm. next year because they want to experience it, right? Right. Cade Beloso grew up going to Omaha, watching LSU play in Omaha. And so, like, you see that a lot through Louisiana, right? These kids that grew up in Louisiana that we wanted to be at LSU, we wanted to play at LSU, we were going to go watch and play there as fans mm-hmm. and then get to experience it. I think it means a lot more for us, right? right? Yeah. Being from here in Louisiana to go and do it. So it's really cool that – one, we got to meet y'all there, and two, um, that y'all got to experience that. Um, if you didn't know it, they went to Omaha and won. That's yeah, true. Yeah. If they, they're playing it on pretty said thick. It. <laughs> <laughs> Never said that. No. Always calling his oldest shit. That's what he's doing right now. Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I remember kid. watching y'all play. I, would, I was supposed to go to Omaha for a showcase. I uh, turned it down. Had a family beach trip. Okay. So I hung up oh, the cleats. Big that day. beach trip. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> My parents said I couldn't go. There you go. <laughs> Nickel State can wait. <laughs> um, you're, you're an outfielder. You're a pitcher. You play a little first base. Yes. Have you been bouncing around between the outfield? Uh, you know, I don't know. You're playing all three outfield spots, corner spots, and first base. And, you know, how has – um, you know, you talk about your the scheduling adjustment. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously the ramp up in talent right. is is another thing, right? Mm-hmm. And like you, you're coming into the defending national champions, a uh, team that has a number one recruiting class in the country last year, mm-hmm. right? You all are, I think, top five coming in this year. You have a pitching staff that I believe is deeper than it was last year. And obviously you don't have Paul Skeens, but Thatcher's throwing 96, 98 miles an hour right now. You have guys – that I don't think people realize Aiden Moffat's throwing 99 miles an hour. Like, you have arms everywhere. Mm-hmm. How has that adjustment been for you as an offensive player, as a hitter, to say, okay, I got to, you know, want to do this well, or, okay, I got I to gotta work on this? Really, I'm just trying to better myself in any way that I can help our team win, help our team, like, get back to Omaha, as we were just talking about. The talent's definitely there, I feel like. If there's nobody as talented. If there is, then they're not matching and they're not working like we are. So the talent's a whole nother level, but really the adjustment, it's just all mentality like, hey, I'm going to do whatever I have to do to better myself, to better this team. And we have a good group of guys. I love that. I, I always wonder, like, from person to person, well, what it's Dave like. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I, like I that. always wonder what it's like from person to person, what it's like coming to college for the first time because. It really doesn't matter how good of a high school team you are on, whatever it is. At some point, you get to college and or if you were to go straight to pro ball and you're like, all right, this is a different level. What was like your first moment where you realized like, OK, this is not definitely not high school ball. This is a little bit different right here. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, probably the first day of practice, <laughs> like we're, uh, we're taking BP and I'm seeing Bear Jones blast balls over the opposite field. They don't make many Bear Jones in high school. No, I'm, not watching, on many I'm high school watching Bear teams. blast them. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, Ooh. Don't All leave right, that one here, there. Here it is. Yeah. Were, you right. in his, were you in his BP group? That's not yeah, fun. Yeah, I, I was in his BP group. And uh, <laughs> it's definitely nerve wracking because I'm not going first and I'm seeing that like, Whew. All right. Here we go. And that's when I kind of 
it all set in. I'm like, I'm finally here. Let's yeah. go. Um, you have some sock though. You got some. A little bit. You got some, you got some juice now. I imagine that's uh-huh. gonna that's gonna continue to develop, right? Right. Um, the outfield. You feel like the outfield is. You have the three guys that you feel like are probably gonna get the first crack at it, right? You feel like you know Pax has been around. You bring in uh, Bingham. You you have uh, Pearson out there who who's played the outfield for mm-hmm. you know two years, going on three years. But at the same time, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity too, right? right? Um, how have how has that competition been as far as getting on the field? Because Jay has shown over the last couple of years that he's going to give everybody an opportunity mm-hmm. to show you what, show him what what they can do, right? Everybody's right. going to get some at bats, especially early on. How has that competition been? You know, for us, I feel like it's a it's always a good thing. But you know, I want to hear your perspective on, on competition in the outfield and and some of the other position battles. Oh, our team definitely has a great competitive nature. I think that's something that Coach Johnson preaches to us every day. And it's like, yeah, this guy's my teammate. I want the best for him, but also like, I want to beat you out. Right. Right. So it brings out the best in all of us, and I think that it just brings elevated baseball. Like it makes everybody their absolute best every day. And so it's awesome. Look, you're, you're Lloyd approves of your answer. Elevated yeah. baseball is just like that's a high level answer. I've yeah, never heard Lloyd, those two Lloyd words back to back. Uh, uh, your answer is now obviously it's not when you come to college. <laughs> A big part of coming to college is figuring out Halloween, staying out of Fred's. We're staying in Fred's. We're staying in Fred's. Um, you know, when I got here, you know, I came from Lafayette, so like you had to. He went straight out, to Fred's. Straight had, to Fred's. You had to figure out. Well, I got kicked out of Fred's a few times because I was too young to get in. See, he I went straight to Fred's. I told and you. Jay just pulls right up to oh, the front line. Just... So, excuse my friend here. He's from Lafayette where you can get into the bar when you're 14 years old. So, when you get to Baton Rouge, it's a little different. 18. I was 18. I know, but you Every can drink. In, in Lafayette, you can drink at 18 in the bar. I wasn't bar. drinking. Oh. I was not drinking. Why'd you get kicked out? Because I was too young to be in there. I could, was, guys aren't allowed to get in uh, uh, Fred's under, eight, under 20, 21. Uh, 20. Anyway. My whole question Sounds like you is, took it well. My whole question. Yeah, it was not good. I don't like it. I love the stone face friends. that Jake's giving. He's like, no, dog, I'm not talking about it. <laughs> Embarrass me in front of all my friends. <laughs> uh, but when you get, like, when I got here, I had to learn how to live alone. Right? Mm-hmm. I had to learn, you kind of grow up a little bit. You, you're away from home. You're living mm-hmm. on your own. You got to go to school. You got to follow your schedule. Um, but you also got to have a little fun. Right. Right? How has that transition been off the field? Like, hey, are you having a good time? Are you enjoying being here? How was Halloween? What did you dress up as? All of those fun things that we love. Because, listen. We were known, baseball players were known for throw, throw, throwing a banger of a Halloween party. I don't know if that's a little thing, but we, we kept it going for a while. Right, so uh, we had a little team get-together. Okay, okay perfect. That. We had a team get-together. A bunch of the guys were all together, and I was a baby, so I just had the full onesie. You know, oh, you did the whole onesie baby? Whole a onesie, literal baby. Whole onesie, <laughs> baby bottle, all the good stuff. What was the best Halloween costume in it the squad? sounds like that. Squad? Oh, There's two really good ones. Zeb Ruddle was a nun. Oh. <laughs> so that was interesting. And then Josh, no Josh well. Pearson was a kitten mouse. A kitten mouse. Uh, take that how you want to take it. He was, he was a kitten mouse. A kitten mouse. Funny guy. I don't, know what the and, kid, uh, I don't know what that is. You need pictures after the show. Yeah, there's pictures. Yeah, we had, listen, <laughs> we had guys. We, we have had, receipts. We had guys dressed up as Teletubbies. And they had, to, they had to walk back from Fred's dressed up as the whole Teletubby squad. Right? Uh, I had to dress up. My your freshman year is usually like the most outrageous. Hey. Tickle Me Elmo was my freshman year costume. Um, Bo dressed up as uh, a bunch of different. I'm gonna tell you right now. I was never <laughs> so. <laughs> Lewis Coleman and Chris McGee dressed up as Walker Texas Ranger hey, and listen, the sidekick. I'm gonna give you a good one. Awesome. I, I'm sure you know about this, but you might have forgot about it. I was never a part of this party. Um, you were playing football. I was. So I'm not trying to like you know. Oh, I was too good. It's just, I wasn't hey, around. You for it. Yeah, 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 but Alabama week. I yeah. do remember being <laughs> yeah. in the um, <laughs> compliance meeting at the beginning of spring, and I'm not throwing any names out. Mm-hmm. I won't. This will be. This will stay anonymous. But we did have a player. Compliance comes in, do's and don'ts. That whole meeting, right? And they're like, "Hey guys, so you know the social media thing's starting to kick up. We have some examples of things you can and can't do." Um, at that time, we had a player who decided to show up to the Halloween party in assless chaps. And it was every bit of that. Okay. <laughs> so this was one of the uh, 
This was one of the. It was one of the <laughs> examples of. Screen. This is a don't. <laughs> don't do that. You can't do this anymore because I think these things get out. These Facebook days. has turned out to be not a fad. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Just glad y'all are not there. You know, yeah, full baby suit is where you need right. to stay down. Yeah. How, yeah. how is the personality of the team though? Like, how are the new guys? Y- y'all are coming in, right? Every right. year, the team's different, right? Mm-hmm. The the culture of the team, the feel of the team, the chemistry of the team is different. Like, you had a national championship mm-hmm. team. A lot of guys left. You had a lot of big, you know, names gone. Right. You bring in a whole other group of guys, guys that were there, but still now trying to make a different role for themselves, mm-hmm. bringing in guys like you and transfers. How is the personality of the team? Um, how's the closeness of the team? I know everybody's still trying to get to know each other. You're having right. fun. Do you all hang out together? How is that, how's that going? Uh, it's, it's awesome. It's great. We have a good group of guys. I mean, when you're around these guys for eight, ten hours a day at the field and then you're hanging out with them off the field, it's like, it's almost hard to not merge with these guys. And now that it's all like brothers now already. And I've that. only been here for two months. Two months. It feels like it's longer than that. You're, you're pretty very even pretty keel, very, very smooth. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I was saying. Yeah, you're you're pretty very. That's, what, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's a Mikey mo- phrase. Um, what Hitting or pitching? Big strikeout, big homer. Which one actually brings the mm. emotion out of you right now? That's a good question, but I think they both have their moments. Like, obviously, when you – you're down by two. You hit a three-run bomb to take the lead. It's like, wow. Mm. Like, you feel like the man. Like, oh, so you're uh, telling us you're just giving us the, the buttoned up look. Okay, I got it. <laughs> no, no, no I, That's <laughs> what you can do. But, okay, but no also, I got it, I got it. also, you go out there, you get a big punch, you to end the inning, throw up a zero, and you're walking back to the dugout. Like, yeah, like, I just did you that. You got to talk but, a little shit. You yeah. Know what I mean? yeah. yeah. You know, well, I like you, you start to feel yourself a little bit. But, I mean, it's really, it's whatever the moment is, wherever I can help the team, that's what I'm, what's my mind's on? Well, especially if, if you went, like you said, you went to the College World Series, you got to see Gavin Guidry in that moment of the right. college, where he kind of took a second, like mm-hmm. took a beat to look around and take it all in. That's as a pitcher, like right. that's what you dream for, right? Yeah, that's your Lake Charles you brethren right there. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you don't dream as a kid of being up by 14 and punching out a guy in the fourth. No, right. but if you paint the picture of I get to take a second here, right? Like yeah. that's that, that's a different. That's what kind I'm of saying. Dream. Like when you're in the top or the bottom of the ninth, and there's one out left, Bases and, loaded. and yeah. you get to win it all, you you have to take a second. Is that is that a cool feeling for you watching him, knowing like, hey, I was literally just playing either with him or again. I don't know if y'all played together right. at all in the summer, but like with him or against him last year. This is dope to see him on this stage, literally. Yeah, di- y'all later. are district rivals in high school, right? So we, we were district rivals. District rivals, but I mean, but, you know, in the summer circuit. No, right, 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 no, no, right, right, right. right. Yeah, right. but I mean, me, like me and Gavin grew up with each other, so seeing him right. on that stage, it's like wow. Like, yeah. and then also knowing that I have a shot of being there next year. Right. But I mean, you can't not be happy for the guy. Yeah, of course. If they told you you can only play one spot this year, not second. for the rest of your life. Second base. Year. Huh? Second base. <laughs> Where would you? What would you? Would you rather hit or pitch this year? Whatever can happen. You're whatever I need to do. Whatever I need uh, to do to win to make the team win. This the is not inside that. information. We're this is a just straight up question. No, like you love both. We're right? not even live both. right now. You love both. But like, if they said you could only pick one, which one do you do? And you don't have to answer it. I was just, you know. Mm. No, you have to answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't know how to answer this without Whichever one like. Whichever gets me on the field first. Yeah, I mean that's it. Yeah. That's that's the true answer. Whichever one puts me on the field. When you were getting, uh, when you're like when you're going through the draft, were mm-hmm. they were you going to be able to do both in pro ball? Uh, I had some scouts interested in one way, some scouts interested in the other way. Nice. So it okay. was it was, it was that whole. Rangers were pitching. Okay. That whole process, it's crazy, right? It's, it's unbelievable, <laughs> and it happens out of nowhere. Like you don't hear anything from. <laughs> February to April, and then the end of May comes around. And it's boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know what to do. And what you you set your you set a number for yourself. And you right, said, right. So I was gonna go, mm-hmm. and then you know some guys set the number and then falter and panic and say, well, I don't want to go to school, so they go down. Or some mm-hmm. guys say, set a number. I'm not ready to go. I want to go to college, and at the end, just make the number you know a right. lot higher or pull themselves out. Mm-hmm. How did that process go with you? Well, me, my family, my advisor, we took a lot of time on this. Like, we started thinking about it pretty early. And then once we set the number, it was like, all right, we had all the factors in, like what it would take to get me away from my dream and then what it would take to get me to turn all this down and take the next step. And pretty much we just stuck with it. It was like, it didn't matter how many phone calls we got, like, we knew the worth, and I'm going to take a bet on myself right here. I love that y'all yeah. actually get to say my advisor now. Like, that used to not ever be a thing. It used to be. No, like, oh, no, 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 no. You used to be able to say my advisor. You couldn't say my agent. Now you can have an agent, right? No, you still you can't. You still can't have an agent? No, you, could, you couldn't say my advisor either. It was like, it was, you could talk about, like. My uncle. 
you know, people it, helping me with this yeah shit. like mm-hmm. but it wasn't like oh you couldn't just openly say my like it wasn't a that wasn't a thing then um for you in that draft process was it like was it something that look i get it lsu is a mm-hmm. dream school for you somewhere you always wanted to be the other opportunity arose right. became a thing it was mm-hmm. a possibility that i had gone there for you was it hey like i really know like this is where i want to go and you are gonna have to do a lot to pull me mm-hmm. away from it or it's I know I can do it here or I know I can do it there as well. Whatever the best possibility is or the best opportunity is, that's where I'm going to go. Which, which side did you kind of sit on when it comes to that? I was more of a, I want to be here. It's going to take a lot to get me away from LSU. Just from the past, like I've grown up, like I said, this has been my dream my whole life and I'm finally here getting to live it out. Yeah, it's, it's weird because like people don't, that's a, it's a big decision. There's a lot that goes behind it. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of dollars were thrown at you. A lot of money was in your, in your face and, and thrown. And people don't understand. It's like, man, that's a lot. But I know I always wanted to do this. And if I do this right, I can leave here with times the amount that probably mm-hmm. was thrown at me at that point. And that's, it takes a, a real mature decision maker to actually understand that and mm-hmm. see that and then make that decision and move forward. So kudos to you for doing that. Yeah, man, that's a tough, I mean, it's tough, mm-hmm. right? Like it's, a, it's a hard decision because – you know, when you get drafted, dude, you're not, you're gone. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're be, not, right. yeah. you're not just in Louisiana two two hours down the road where your family can just drive up and you have some. No, nah, you're tricks you up a little. Oh, you're in it. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're in in it. it. Like, right. You're gone, mm-hmm. right? Which is which is chances nuts. are in a place you never heard of in your life. Yeah, too. right. Mm-hmm. And how much of it was? Obviously, you wanted to go to LSU. Like, if mm-hmm. you put your head down at night and you're like, okay, I got drafted. I'm thinking about going to this spot. Like, and then you're still at the back of your mind is like, or I could go to LSU. Like, was that right. kind of, like, some of the deciding factors? Like, I just went to Omaha. Mm-hmm. I've seen everybody in the purple and gold. This is what I want to do. Like, this is more almost as close to the dream as Major League Baseball is in a sense. Right. Well, I think LSU baseball is just the foundation for Major League Baseball at this point. I think all the billboards, the powerhouse, like, that's no joke. Like, right. this, the is the best, this is the best level of baseball you can get. I mean, look at all the guys that have come in, right, mm-hmm. and, and turned down money. Kevin right. Gall. I mean, I'm going to go back. Mm-hmm. Back. Like, Predate him. DJ LeMahieu turned down a million plus dollars. Came to LSU, made, made, made just, a lot. Yeah, he made a lot of money. It worked <laughs> out. Uh, <laughs> Let's just go with a lot. Yeah, yeah. Aaron Nola turned down a bunch mm-hmm. of money, made more. Right. Gosman turned down a bunch of money, made more. Bregman turned down a bunch of money, made more. Mm-hmm. Cruz, Skeens obviously didn't come out of high school, so that was a little different, right? That doesn't count. Shows the power uh, of LSU, though. Right, like right. he brought him over there, right? So you have all these guys – that have had the opportunity to get this money and turn it down and come here. And I'm on the, I'm on the side of the fence of like, hey, if I'm that good out of high school, I'm going to be even better coming out of college. Right, so that yeah. money is just going to go up, mm-hmm. you know, through the roof. Unless you draft me in the top ten rounds, there's not many, you know, there's not – when you get drafted in the top ten, there's not many picks you mm-hmm. can improve on. Right. Right? But outside of that, I mean – you know, you, you, you've, seen the, you've seen the evidence. You've seen mm-hmm. guys do it. So that had to help too. Right. Pretty much it's just – betting on myself, betting on my coaching staff here, which yep. no doubt they're going to do whatever it takes to win the national championship, but they're also going to do whatever it takes to let players live out their dream, get to the next level. And Coach Johnson does an amazing job. Did you um, grow up playing other sports? Yeah, I, I played football, basketball, and ran track growing up. Love that. All through high school? What a guy. No, high school, I – no, decided that base, decided baseball was my passion pretty early, and Did so you, you high decided? school was all, yeah, I, it was all me. My dad hated it, but yeah, so you played just baseball. just baseball at Sulphur, mm-hmm, right? Sulphur used to whoop my ass in football, coach. Y'all yeah, have we, some big dudes. Oh, we used to be good. Oh, they're not good. Y'all aren't good anymore. We're not strong right now. We're rebuilding. Okay, what a good answer. We, Great we got, answer. Got, you've been, you've been taught no, no, well. No. We uh, we got a new coach came in and he's starting to put his work on our. Hey, the foundation. I had one of my right. best high school games against Sulphur. Hey, I can remember? Well, what, give me the numbers. I, it was four touchdowns. I don't remember what else went on, but four touches. You boy saw the end zone a lot. Hey, I was pl- I was a quarterback my sophomore year. They were. They were. were. He had they had this big white linebacker. I think he played at McNeese. At Sulphur. Yes. <laughs> and I was playing quarterback, and I was a sophomore, and I was you know. Never – wasn't a slider. I was a – I'm going to get contact, and I'm running, and I'm running. I try to lower my shoulder on this guy, and I'm running. All of a sudden, I'm no longer on the ground. All of a sudden, I'm backwards, and I'm on the ground. And my back's on the ground. I was like, so Sulphur used to, you know, used to be – you know, we're good in baseball. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, my – I went to St. Thomas more, so we were in 5A for the years that I was there and mm-hmm. played job. But Sulphur, y'all are good. Y'all are good right, there. yeah, no, we have a lot of guys to choose from. We got a big group. Do of, you still like watching other sports? 
Like, yeah, do you still like you like still like watching yeah, yeah. football? Like, you're a fan of other sports. Right, right. Yeah, no Some doubt. baseball guys, you walk in a locker room and they don't think those other sports exist, and it's like, yeah. well, that's that's not that much fun. Like, you should be able to enjoy, you know. Right. Yeah, I like turning sports. the TV on and being into something. So, like being like you go to the football games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I go to the football games. Enjoy it. Yeah, it's great. How could you it's, not? How great is how it? Could you not? How great is that. it walking down and having to go to the student section? But then you get to pass the whole student line. Oh, Do they yeah, still have that where you get to walk through the so gate? We, uh, we have a system where it's like we have our tiger cards or whatever, like our school identification, yeah. and then we'll go to the side by the Lawton room and yep. just swipe us and in. And you go through the Lawton room or you still go through the side? Like, through the no, stadium? yeah, we still go through the side, but we, yeah, we walk right past everybody. And they don't like y'all. Well, I mean, at the same time, you're also LSU baseball. No so, doubt. So they're looking at you. No, I mean, for sure. But sometimes they get a little drunk and they get upset because they've been waiting in line for a little while. And they right. just. And Mikey probably say, says some nonsense to them. So they, like, they start you popping You say, off to excuse them. me, excuse me. And they get through this. And all of a sudden, you're now getting in there. And then. <laughs> There's nowhere to later, go. They show up. Yeah, they're for not you. At you. But it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Let's take advantage of it. You talked a little bit about, or Mikey brought up the change from last year's national championship team to this mm -hmm. year, but you bring some guys back with Milazzo right. and who's one of the finest Trevin human beings ever of all time. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah. And Travinsky, like mm -hmm. guys like those that kind of carry on what you had. And I would say those were glue guys from last year's championship mm -hmm. team. Do you feel that kind of presence of what they brought from last year, bringing it into this year? Or is it totally different? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, these are guys, both Travinsky and Milazzo who have had all the college experience in the world. And then they're here. All. For they're here, yeah. They've been here for a while. <laughs> uh, they're here bringing it every day, and it's like they want this just as bad as the new guys do, and that's what's awesome about it. I think that's why we're gonna get there again this year. Who's someone on the squad right now that from day one you showed up, and it's like, man, this guy goes about his business the right way. Um, you've basically stuck to them mm -hmm. like glue and following and understanding. Like, hey, I want to be able to model my work ethic or mm -hmm. the way I go about my business the way they go about theirs. Uh, there's a lot of guys. I mean, I can't even begin to name them all, but the one that stands out really is Hayden. It's like every day I try to get there earlier than everybody else, and it's every time I get there, Hayden's in there putting in work, whether it's treatment work, whether it's getting extra swings before practice or anything. I mean, he's bouncing around, catch first base, getting swings in. He's, he's doing it all. It doesn't – and, it like, you saying that, it doesn't surprise me. I think I kind of knew about that. I've heard that about him already, but people don't understand, like, that's how a guy who – Started the year hurt, wasn't playing very much. That's how when he gets an opportunity three-fourths of the way mm -hmm. into the season, he literally hits the ground running like that, and it becomes a very, very, very integral mm -hmm. part of a championship team because right. those guys didn't take the days they had for granted away from when they were playing. They always stayed in it. They, he was always a, a very, very, very upbeat player on the team, and yeah. it showed and obviously in how things kind of played out for him. Right. So I'll, I have this question, though, because last year they had a very pretty balanced lineup, mm -hmm. right? Right, left, right, left, the whole deal. Y'all are pretty righty heavy mm -hmm. now. Y'all don't have a lot of lefty bats, bats coming back. Yeah, bats coming back. Obviously, Pearson hits the swings left handed. You swing left handed. Mm -hmm. But as far as that, as far as y'all go, like, you know, you've got to feel pretty good about, you know, being able to go in there and say, I have, I bring a different dimension. Mm -hmm. To the lineup, and I add, you know, a lefty, another lefty bat in this lineup. That's gonna make you feel pretty good. I don't know if you've noticed that or, or felt that or um, had any conversations about that. Uh, right. No, we brought in a lot of left-handed guys. Actually, like the freshman class has right. five, six, seven left-handed hitters. And I mean, you look at the lineup, and you can't really tell. Like that never runs through my mind really when I'm playing. I'm just trying to go get after it. No doubt. That's a good answer. Um, but I mean, for me as a baseball, like watching baseball. The fact that they all have a lot of lefties coming in as freshmen, mm -hmm. like that's going to give you all an opportunity to get in there and be able to like right, yeah, no doubt. give give Jay some lineup flexibility. Well, you saw know. Pearson last year. I mean, right. that's kind of how he wiggled his way into the lineup. Was like they wanted a left-handed bat, and yeah. then you keep playing, and then you it, find it yourself. It gives you the opportunity for lineup and matchup flexibility, right. honestly. And that's right. I, that's got to be something I would imagine in your mind. It's pretty exciting because mm -hmm. hey, you're a young one, right? You're here, you're new. There's a lot of lefty young ones coming up, but you realize. For a good team to kind of make it throughout the year, it's going to be really hard for us to do it with eight righties in the lineup. Right, yeah, We're no going doubt. to need some left-handed bats. It's mm -hmm. going to have to show up at some point. Right. So it's got to be pretty exciting to you to know that, hey, look, there's an opportunity here. And right, you know, yeah. as long as I do what I need to do, I may be the one that's actually taking advantage of that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any opportunity that I have to get out there, it's like whether it's being a left-handed bat, whether it's being a guy that can move, it's – Anything, Pinch run, any, anything, yeah, anything yeah. that I can do to get on the field and help the team. Because, I mean, like Mikey will tell you, when, when he showed up, it wasn't about lefty or righty, but mm -hmm. Mikey looked around the outfield and was like, well, shit, 
I'm gonna have to figure this thing out for a while because there's some dudes out here. And only he reason did. I, only and reason he did. I traveled was because I was a, I could play all three outfield spots. The, the cream rises to the top, and he did. He found his way out there, and he became. Well, Chad went back to football. Huh? <laughs> Chad went back to football. <laughs> <I hope. laughs> they gave me a shot. It gave that's me a part shot. of it. Yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> that's, a, that's part of it. They gave me so, a shot. So you know, I mean, and he, he didn't. He didn't let it go. My point is, he didn't let it go no when doubt. he took the opportunity. 100%. When the opportunity came from. But like I said, so understanding like yep. hey there's things going on around me i have to kind of be cognizant of what's going on and know where hey this may be my opportunity this may be my end right yeah no no doubt. Doubt. um are you a fan of baseball like you watch the world you are you going for the series? rangers or are you not uh i was hoping the diamondbacks would pull it out just because like they were exciting to watch about the whole playoffs for me and then i hate the phillies like, wow, why is that? Ooh, I, wow, this I, is why is that? Didn't draft yeah. me. Me and my family grew up a Braves fan. So, oh, okay. Uh, so y'all got okay, that butt We were all the, Braves fans. You would so like our social media had, guy. We had a little dirt on the Phillies going into it. Yeah. But, okay. Fucking TBS gets everybody every time. Right, it had exactly. me. WGN coaches right I had, there. They had me too. I had not get you if you're young here? That's what you get, right? Yeah. Well, now you get, you know, the... You know, Sunday night and Wednesday night on ESPN, you get a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, same thing. You're TBS, supposed to come home here. when you're in third grade and you pop on WGN Channel 12 in Alexandria and you watch Chip uh, Carey call the Cubs game. Sammy Sibisa doing the whole Harry deal. Carey? And Chip Carey, his son, oh, no, who now no. is a trader, a turncoat, and calls the games for the Braves. Wow. <laughs> that hurts you a little bit. Hey, it's great voice. For somebody who's a fake baseball fan, you know a lot. Well, yeah, it's weird. That's good. I was in Omaha too, by the way. Twice. You know who? You know who wasn't? <laughs> I was in Omaha. Boy was signing autographs in Omaha. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, real, that's a real life yeah. story. Yeah. Bottomless. Well, okay. Hey, yo. I mean, hey. Mimosas. Mimosas. Yeah, mimosas. Okay. Yeah, bottomless mimosas. Uh, all right, so it's three to one, right? Series is three to one, zero zero. Obviously, as oh, good play. Oh. Um, you do you Dude. think Rangers close it out tonight, or do you think Diamondbacks? I think there's a good shot the Rangers can close it out tonight just by how hot they are. I mean, you saw last night the bats were just exploding. And, they, um, almost, they almost little leaked it at the end. Right, no, I saw that. Yeah. I think but, they found um, something. I'm about to love that the old Diamondbacks. I think the Rangers got lightning in a bottle right now, and it's going to take mm-hmm. a lot to stop. Vivaldi's on the mound. Right. You, know, you, got the, you got the ace. You got the, you got little, the ace that's healthy. You have two, the other two aces are hurt. So, right. And um, the right fielder's out. If you see the guy. Two, two date right now. Where's the coolest place you played at? Oof. Ooh. I'd say the coolest place I played at was the Pittsburgh Pirates. PNC? No, no, no. I didn't. Oh. I didn't play there. It was one of their minor <laughs> league facilities. In, oh, okay. In and Bradenton. where's that? Bradenton? Oh, the, yeah, the spring training facility. Yeah, the spring training That's, facility. Is it in Bradenton? In Bradenton. Yeah. yeah it's, and, okay. I mean, that place is awesome. Yeah, the, like the the big field, right? Like right. The, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's they did a really good job. It used to suck. Pirate right. City no, over there. You like yeah, that's awesome. Well, Pirate City, yeah. <laughs> it's but about to get supplanted to, by it, Alex it Box. Suck, <laughs> but they redid it and made it a lot better. That's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Yeah, no, it was a good time. It was Team USA, and we were out there, and it's like looking in the back. It's like how got how did you enjoy Team USA? It was awesome. There was, what, it was like 18U? 18U, yeah. Did y'all go anywhere cool like spots? Did you go like overseas? You mm, go no, places? we were all in Florida. Like all of our games oh, really? were in Bradenton. Who'd y'all play? Australia, Canada, Taipei, Japan, Brazil, everybody. The usual suspects. Right, yeah. yeah. Go ahead and tell me. Anybody that wanted to lose. Huh? Go ahead and tell me how you disappointed your country. I didn't disappoint. Abreu hit the walk-off home. What do you want me to do? In the gold medal game. We're in Tokyo. And Jose Abreu. Heavy Cuba. air in Tokyo. Mm-hmm. Huh? Heavy air. Well, it was in a dome. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Jose Abreu. I mean, Cuba has basically had Cespedes. They had Jose Abreu. They had Guriel. They had um, your glove. A bunch of guys. My glove, I gave them. <laughs> <laughs> and we're winning three to one. We're in ten, the tenth inning, and uh, three to one in the tenth. Jose Bray walk off the run home. I, I mean, I don't know what you want me to do. At that point, it was I don't know who this guy is, but he can hit a little bit. But yeah, he had two homers. He had all four guys. It was not fun. I'm twelve. Yeah, that's a, yeah it sucks. she's pretty good. <laughs> He's not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's okay. Seen worse. Yeah, yeah, it worked out. He's okay. Me. He's okay. Yeah. Um, what's y'all's uh, scrimmage schedule like this week? You have Monday, I mean a Friday scrimmage. Mm-hmm. We're Friday, Saturday, and then we travel to McNeese Saturday afternoon to play. No uh, LSU football. I know we play McNeese Sunday morning. So, so what time are y'all leaving? You think on Saturday? Probably leaving around like four. So I, we'll catch the game. 
you want to get right at the start of the game, we're all going to have it. We're going to like stay in, we're staying in a hotel. Yeah, we're staying in a hotel. So oh, they're like, going to be actually gonna, fun. Actually, that's probably the best way to do it. Are they right. going to like? I'm going to talk to Jay. Jay. Yeah, I mean, you got to set these. You got to set these guys up with a spot and like the 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 four like a room or something with a mm-hmm. big screen. Like, yeah, no doubt. You Prince. think that he's, uh, he's got to do something, Prince. right? <laughs> right. I hope. Yeah. Hey, a team meal. Team dinner and don't you get, get some pizza or whatever it is that you want for team. Jay's gonna be locked into it. You That's know Jay's a big football guy. You know that. Come you on. know they're gonna watch it. You know, you know they're gonna right, watch yeah, it. So gonna... why don't y'all watch it together? Right, no doubt. All right, well, this is a we'll PSA for the LSU baseball team to root on the LSU football team. Well, he's Jay, your family. He's your dad. So why don't you tell him? I'll tell him. Okay, I might go at, at dinner. Maybe I'll watch it with the team. You go like Charles. Family. There you go. Yeah. Sit there. Be the bad boy for the game. I gotta get an AB. Be the bad boy. Defensive no. replacement. Definitely not. No, You've never, just a bad boy. Maybe a pinch runner. That's the last thing. This groin is toast. You're past your prime. Just a bad boy. That's true. Um, We're all past And that. then when do y'all finish? I like, speak when, for yourself. When's the Purple and Gold World Series? Down. Speak for yourself. Uh, I think the Purple and Gold World Series is like the week before Thanksgiving. Yeah, right before Thanksgiving. So y'all are kind of – y'all are in like the stretch run of, of fall. Right, you have yeah. a few weeks left. Mm-hmm. Um. Who has, and just the, probably the last question before I, you know, obviously I don't mm-hmm. want to keep you too, too long. We kept you waiting a little early, but. No, nah, it's fine. Guys, when you came in, right, mm-hmm. you saw these guys, and Jay asked you earlier, you know, someone who's, uh, you know, maybe surprised you or whatever, mm-hmm. but when you walk in, you see this team coming in, you have all these freshmen. As a freshman, mm-hmm. when I was a freshman, you come with your recruiting class, and guys you didn't know, you size up. Now, it's a little different now because the baseball circuit in high school is way different than it was when we were coming mm-hmm. out. And so you've probably played around, played with some of these guys right. uh, throughout you know the summers or whatever. Mm-hmm. But as anybody, when you come here, you said, "Okay, I saw this guy on TV. or watched him last year." Um, and you come to school and you say, "Okay, damn, he's different than I thought, or bigger, or right. damn, he's you know doing things I didn't think." Hit it four fifty. Yeah, I didn't think that. Yeah, I didn't think he could do stuff like this. There's someone that's like kind of shot you, huh? So as advertised. Yeah. Right. Oh, there's a good bit of guys. One that stands out for me is Christian Little. Like, I'm here, and I watched Christian Little. I watched him at Vandy. I watched him last year for LSU, and now I'm seeing him on the mound. I'm like, that, that's real stuff. Yeah. Like, he looks like he's been got it. shoving. Like, he's been killing it. He's been yeah. having an amazing fall, and I got here and saw him. I'm like, that's real. Throwing a lot more strikes? Because oh, that was his deal yeah, last year, right? Up. He'd fall behind, but he's – I think he's like 70% first pitch strikes right now. Wow. If you, you get him back to what he is supposed wow. to be doing and what he yeah. knows he can do, what's in there, it's Is he throwing more fastballs? He's throwing a good mix. I, th- I mean – can't that really slider try. was a wipeout last yeah, year. Yeah, that's a good – I mean, having the mix, I think the problem was he relied on the slider a lot, and right. then it's such a good pitch that it would get – he would get behind counts. Guys weren't swinging at it, and then he kind of lost feel of his heater. So having that mix, I think, is, is important. Yeah, no, he's putting some work, and he's looking yeah. really good. Good. Yeah. Love Reason he came that. back. Huh? Reason he came no back. No doubt. Because no he got doubt. drafted. Yep, no doubt. Um, well, dude, I appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Um, we're going to keep – we'll hopefully have you on a lot more. You know, the fall will get done, mm-hmm. spring will start, and that's kind of really when right. Mike Duff starts how, ramping up. How the year bit. works. Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> when Mike Duff starts ramping up. It's when we, we turn into a, a baseball of, show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have a lot of you guys on. So, like, right. you know, we, we like this. Mm-hmm. It makes us feel like we're still part of something bigger right, no doubt, and, like, yeah. we can have locker room talk here. And just, it's a good deal. So, I appreciate Sweet. you, dude. Yeah, thank you all for having me. Um, awesome. No, thanks for coming on, thanks dude. Coming on. Uh, anytime. Yeah, Open sure. forum, man. That's awesome. it. All right, dude. Sweet. Thank you all. Enjoy. Of course, bro. man.